I want to share how I think this Yom, this uh, Simcha Torah is going to be. How do you dance on a day? As Rabbi Shaw said, the most difficult and challenging and dark day in Jewish history since the end of the Shoah. Over 1,200 people, close to 1,300 people, have a yard site in that day. I thought to myself that in our shul in Yad Binyamin, when we open the ark and take out the Torah at about 9 o'clock, my son was shot, wounded, probably killed at 9.01 and 46 seconds. And that's probably the time we listen to the, uh, to the, the recording. And uh, that's the time that we're going to be taking out the Sifrei Torah. How do you dance at a time where the pogrom that we say of the Kilot HaKodesh, of the pogrom we say, Avarachamim, we say, Akilot Shenechneku, Venisrafu, Venishchatu, Venensu, we can add terrible things, all happened on one day, the most barbaric day, as we were supposed to be dancing with the Torah. How do we possibly dance with genuine happiness in our hearts? And I just want to share a reflection which made me understand our wedding. And I want to share a reflection where I felt it most deeply actually was at my father, Shiva Dalachai Marukim. I think he's taken our son's death uh, along with my wife, the, the hardest, and um, certainly the, the capture and the, 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 the sufferings while we thought he was alive. And the, um, he, he, Shiva Dalachai Marukim turned 85 um, a number of months ago. And I'll never forget, it's his 85th birthday, it was the first time that we'd all got together. Kfara Roe lives next door, my sister, all the, the grandchildren, almost all the grandchildren were there for the first time at a simcha. And one of my siblings said, all the grandchildren, all the grandsons, come have a picture with Grandpa Gil. At that moment that all the grandchildren came up, my wife broke down in tears went to the next door room, I went with her, totally broken. My sister came up to me and said to me, Doron, I'm so sorry. She said, I said to her, you don't have to be sorry. Our grandfather, our father deserves the happiness to be with every one of his grandchildren who are alive. He deserves that happiness and must be a picture. And that's 100% okay. But don't deny us our pain to cry so deeply. And I said to her the words then which have been echoing in my mind since then the last two months. I said to Ariella, it's okay. It is so not okay, but it's okay. And it made me realize what so many people who mourn go through. That for us, the happiest occasions in our lives are going to be tinged with the most painful moments, and it's okay. It's so not okay, but it's okay. And it made me realize that that's what happened on our son, Yonatan's wedding, who got married 10 days after the 7th of October, Simchat Torah, Or Legimel Mar Cheshvan. It made me realize that um, I didn't think it was possible. I always share that on that day. I thought that the only way I could get through my son's wedding was not to think about Daniel. I've shared this with our solidarity groups. I thought to myself, the only way I will get through this is not thinking about Daniel. And therefore, just before we went to the chuppah, my, my wife Shelley said she has to go into Daniel's room and to fill his suit, and I just couldn't. And it's still very hard for me to go into his room. And we went in, we cried, we came out. I said, Shell, let, let's focus on what we have. We've got Yonatan. Let's just focus on Yonatan. And there, all I was doing was focusing on Yonatan. And as I've told, we get to the chuppah, and he's focusing on the simcha. And then the rabbi, just by the way, uh, at, this sim, at our simcha, we had Yonatan Razel singing. Um, he sang Vahisha Amda. Uh, we discussed as a family, like if there was one musician who would come, and we said, Yonatan Razel, and he sang at the, at the Chuppah V'Hisha Amda and Imeshka uh, Chayich Yerushalayim. And um, I wanted to say that I thought I was going to get through it by not thinking about Daniel. And then, as I've often said, the rabbi who was marrying them started the Chuppah saying, how can we start this wedding without 
acknowledging who's not here. In my heart, I was saying, I cannot believe that he's doing it. What is he doing? But he did the right thing. How could we not acknowledge the elephant in the room, the person that we miss so much and are so pained by? But I was scared to acknowledge his absence cognitively, consciously, because I thought I would break down and not be able to have a simcha. How wrong I was. We cried bitterly. All of us broke down and cried. We davened for him, Shira Malot. And then an incredible thing happened. We wiped our tears off our faces with tissues. And we celebrated. And boy, what a simcha it was. As I've said, one of our friends said it was the saddest, happiest, holiest, most inspiring wedding she had been at for our family. When I look back at it, it's the happiest occasion in our lives, amongst the happiest, tinged forever with some of the most painful experiences. And I saw that eight svod, the eight record, what Shlomo Melech said, is not different periods in life. It's that they can both happen at the same time, and they do. All of us, you know, we've all got simcha in our lives, and we've got people missing. So much missing, but so much that is. And we are broken and whole, complete and fractured at the same time, and it's okay. It's so not okay, but it's okay. And that's what's going to happen in the Simcha Torah. We are going to dance with tears of happiness. We're going to hold the Torah and we are going to celebrate Simcha Torah. As Yonatan Razel said, it's through the ages. Jewish history didn't begin and end on the 7th of October without pain. There's a long view of history. But at the same time, we're going to cry. And the tears will be mixed up and one hakafa will be crying and one hakafa will be cry tears of joy and, and tears of pain. And you know what? It's okay. It's so not okay, but it's okay. We have joined the generations of Jewish history, which Hashem has given us a furlough from them for many decades, unfortunately, which had to carry this pain. And I want to say in conclusion, we know that uh, in the death of Rabbi Hanina ben Tradion, who was burnt with a Sefer Torah around him, his student said to him, what do you see? And he famously, famously said, and I was thinking of it just looking at the Sivrei Torah, he famously said, what I see as I'm dying, as the Sefer Torah is being burnt around me, I say, I see gvilim nisrafim, I see the parchment being burnt. Ve'otiot porchot ba'avir, and the eternal letters of the Torah are flying in the air. You can burn the parchment, you can burn the body, you can destroy, but you can never, ever taint the Jewish soul. It's eternal. The human being's soul is eternal. The Jewish people's soul is eternal. And yes, they will be with us, every single one of them, our son. And all of them will be with us. They're with, with us every day. And they will be with us when we are in pain. And they'll be with us when we are dancing. And it's fine, it's okay, and it's so not okay, but it's okay. It'll be an eight record, an eight sfod, and we will remember the gvilim nisrafim, the bodies of those which were, were, were horrifically treated. But we will also remember that the otiot, the neshamot, the Jewish soul, each one is porchot ba'avir, they are eternal now with us. And I want to say that it's, I've realized in the last few months how tears of pain and tears of joy come from the same place in the, in, the, in the nefesh. I've realized, I think, that it's because both love and loss have got to do with yearning. We're going to start saying tonight, Ani l'dodi v'dodi li, and we're going to end it on Simchat Torah, Ani l'dodi v'dodi li. And we love and embrace those who are with us, and from that same place, we yearn so deeply for those who aren't. We embrace HaKadosh Baruch Hu so closely, but we yearn for a closeness with Him that we don't have until our Beit HaMikdash is rebuilt. And therefore the place of the pain of yearning, of longing, of desiring closeness, is the very same pain, sorry, the very same happiness of intimacy, of closeness, of love. It comes from the same place. Sometimes the otiyot, the letters are on the parchment, 
And sometimes they put chot ba'avir, but they're the same letters, the same neshomas, the same people, the same essence, whether they are in this physical world or whether they are purchot ba'avir. And we'll embrace them, we'll sing with them, we'll mourn for them, we'll yearn for them, and we'll celebrate together with Klal Yisrael. That is the lot of the package deal of human life, and that is the lot of our people. And forever, I think, from now, Certainly in our lifetime, this will be our celebration of Simchat Torah, a time of celebration, a time of pain. Eight Svod, Eight Rekod, Ubezrat Hashem, Hashem Umachad Dimam El Kulpanim, Hashem, in the only way that He can, will bring back every one of the 101 hostages. Immediately, those to be buried, to be buried like Hassan Daniel, those who are to be with their families, to come home, to look after every single one of us. I know the Chaylim Bodadimia spoke to families whose children are in the front lines. Hashem should look after every one of our sons and daughters, and we should be Ezrat Hashem, Bezrat Hashem, be able to celebrate with the Simcha of Torah, Simcha Shlema, the Simcha of closeness, without pain, and only with privilege, with happiness, and celebration. Thank you, and I'm really sorry that I have to run. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you.